Welcome back to another episode of Banditland Boulevard, a preview episode. Right before, if you if you're watching on YouTube, you see this marvelous yep. background. No pun intended on the word marvelous, but we got Guardians of the Galaxy night tomorrow night, seven thirty at the Key Bank Center for Week Fifteen action between the Buffalo Bandits and the Saskatchewan Rush. Tony, the Bandits are five and six on a three game losing streak. I don't remember yep. the last time they've had a four game losing streak, but I'm feeling pretty confident going into this game. I don't know if it's a weird sense of confidence, but I I I feel good about this one, Tony. I'll just leave it at that. Well, yeah. I mean, now that we got to realize that we just finally signed a two-year deal to a center or a Fogo guy uh, named Connor Farrell, formerly known for his Rochester Nighthawks uh, debut when he did play in the beginning. But we also have to say goodbye to another, and that is to uh, Carter McKenzie. And we're gonna miss you, bud. Wherever you go, whoever you play for, we uh, wish you nothing but the best of luck. Um, for the rest of your career in the National Lacrosse League. And but always remember, again, Carter, you're a 2023 champ forever. Those banners are right. forever. Never forget that's that. That's right. Never forget that. You are a part of a championship team, so that's good on the resume. But also for uh, going into this week, yeah, three games down, um, three straight to go from five and three to five and six is not a pretty picture. But now that we've got some, some sort of hope you may say, of getting this Fogo guy, and maybe there's some roster moves going on um, with the way things are going. But again, there are still some tensions about the you know the starting goaltender for tomorrow night's game against Sass, and uh, we'll have to wait and see what Johnny T does. Yep, I think that's what we got to look at. And you're looking at a Saskatchewan team that uh, the wins and losses, are they're not really there in their favor, similar to that of mm-hmm. the Bandits, so it's a pretty even matchup going into this week. The only yep. good side is the Rush have a back-to-back on Saturday and Sunday, and the Bandits don't. They just have one home game. So Saskatchewan's making a long road trip this weekend. Uh, will Very it have true. any effect on the players? I'm not sure. I'm not a professional uh, lacrosse player. I don't play for the Rush, but I don't, I'm not sure about that. The one thing I know for sure is going into this week, Johnny T doesn't even have to get the boys fired up. They came back no. from Vancouver. They have to be frustrated. They want to, they absolutely have to be frustrated. There's no way that they're going into this week saying, eh, whatever, when they know what's what's on the line. They if they lose this one to Saskatchewan, there's a chance of them falling into 10th or 11th in the overall standings. The bandits know what's at stake. When they show up, when their numbers called upon, they typically show up. And that, we've seen that consistently since 2019. And I think, like you said, with the signing of Connor Farrell. It's going to give us more possessions. It's going to give the offense more opportunities to bounce back. Guys like Dane Smith, guys like Chase Fraser, who Chris Cucci, and guys who have been slumping the past two weeks. It's going to give them more opportunities to shoot, more opportunities to score. I, I guarantee you this guy is fired up, ready to go. Connor Farrell, I bet you the, the boys love him. Ian McKay loves this dude. If you follow him on social media, loves this guy. Um, so they get a new voice in that locker room, even though he is a FOGO guy a new voice, Mm -hmm. a new presence. I think the bandits are fired up for this week. Yeah, I think so too, because he's not only just a face off guy, but he's also transitioned. So he can work with uh, Kyle Buchanan as soon as the play gets started, or even his own former teammate that now, now their teammates again is Highfield and Highfield can be right there along with them. So that's something we also got to look forward to is the, you know, now we can, probably focus on getting the possessions that we need the shot, more shots on uh, against our opponents. And hopefully uh, this will be a confidence boost for the team itself. But like I said, we got to take one game at a time and it starts Friday night against Sass. That's right. And we're not out of it. And we talked off air last episode, the Colorado mammoth to compare us to them. They went to a game three of the finals last year at a nine and nine, 500 record. Do I want the bandits to go nine and nine and barely squeak in? Absolutely not. I want them to win a bunch of the games on their schedule, but Mm -hmm. you have a little bit of wiggle room here. As of right now, the bandits really don't. This is essentially a must win game, but yes, it is. Especially with this new playoff format, you're going to get some teams in the national lacrosse league with some wacky win loss records that are going to squeak Mm -hmm. into the playoffs on a pass. The bandits, what they need to do is take care of business. And then once Mm -hmm. you beat Saskatchewan, you better be scoreboard watching the game that's going to happen between the rush and the riptide after because the rush, we're going to be rooting for them in that game because the riptide have the head to head tiebreaker over the bandits right now. 
And uh, if they lose that game, that's going to be huge for the Bandits in the playoff standings. But we're worried about this game right now. We're, I don't know what you think about these jerseys, Tony, the ones that are behind me. I dig them. Mm-hmm. I think that they're pretty cool. Um, I like them better than the first one that we wore. The, I like them better right. than, the, than the Thor jerseys. I'm excited to see what the Rush are going to bring. It's probably going to be this like neon green jersey with this stuff on it too, which is also going to be pretty cool. One of the mm-hmm. many benefits of being a season ticket holder – at the Bandits games is you get to see all the sweet threads like this. And then back to back to back weeks at home, you saw the Native American jerseys. You're going to see these jerseys and the St. Patty's jerseys next week against the Toronto Rock. So I don't know if, if there's one takeaway in the preview that I know is a guaranteed certainty of mm-hmm. awesomeness. It's these threads. That's, that's just my opinion. Well, I mean, based on the comic books, yes, that's what they uh, that's what they made Marvel out of for the Guardians of the Galaxy. But again, I would have just been more accepted of even if they put the wreck, the, the raccoon on their jersey and had them all decked out in orange and black. That would have been pretty legit with me. Oh, yeah. um, but other than that, I didn't mind the Loki jerseys against uh, Halifax the other night. Really, I thought those look really sweet. But these get these a little bit. Mm. It's not bad. I'm not saying like they can't be more creative, but in a perfect sense, it suits it. And There's I definitely know a lot that's going basically on for front. the Marvel night. So again, they I think they did a pretty good job of what they did based on the comic book. So again, it's gonna sell. You know the fans of Marvel and and uh, obviously for Guardians of the Galaxy, these jerseys are gonna go by pretty fast. So oh, if you're not yeah. the first in line, you're the you're last and last to get any of them. So. If you guys want to get those jerseys, please be the first to go down there and wait in line and get your tickets because I, I guarantee you that's how they do it last time. So I think it was 5.30 last time the doors opened for the Dawson um, jerseys. I believe so, but I think if you get down there like early enough, you could be in line for like first dibs. So I would suggest get down there about 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. There's definitely a lot going on in these jerseys, especially on the front. I dig mm-hmm. them. I know a lot of people don't, but I always love the idea of creating a new uniform and wearing them the whole game. But uh, I sure. think with that, I think we should get into the Saskatchewan rush players to watch. There are quite sure. a few of them on here that we know and we've we've definitely seen in the past. Uh, but, Tony, we were mentioned a little bit off air. I mean, yeah. the, you know, they don't have the best record, but similar to that of, like, Albany, take your pick. You can look at any one of these guys and look at them as a legitimate threat. There was one player sure. I really want to look at. I don't know his all the stats offhand, but – Oh, it was this guy. Forward, Mike Triolo, six foot eight, two twenty-nine. I mean, Jesus. he might not be like lighting the lamp all the time, but you're going up against a six foot eight forward. That's always intimidating. Yeah, you don't want to go up against like a Sedano Chara up and he's a four. No. That's gonna be scary as hell when we see him coming on you know, out in the field and be like uh how's the weather yeah no there? thanks i i i feel bad for like small guys on a team like kyle buchanan and god forbid thank god he's a forward he's not a defender looking up so it's like justin martin and someone else who's smaller and look up go somebody else is gonna have to take this guy i can't but i'm oh. sure they can and it's just it's unbelievable how triolo is going to be again one of the go-to guys to watch out for Sas- uh for the rush and believe me when i say this is that you're gonna have to need two or three people to slow him down which probably gives them the better odds to like, you know, for the rush to win those games, especially how they manhandled Colorado last week, 15 to seven, yeah. especially in that game. So we, that's a great name to watch. And maybe he's like one of those go-to guys that sets a pick or even a, gets in front of the goaltender and sets a big screen. So a that checker. could really be a bad effect yep. to the bandits. A four checker for sure. He's going to be digging out of those loose balls in the corner. <laughs> sure. Look at the size of Justin Martin and look at the size of Mike Triolo. It's like, yeah, forget it. Different atmospheres were they around, but uh, who was one of the players you were looking at? I was looking at one one of their longtime guys, and that's basically Robert Church. Church has been one of the well known rush players that has been on the scoreboard a lot for them in the past to now. And I guarantee you that if the Bandits can't slow him down, that's going to be one of the go to guys to watch. That you'll see maybe three, four goals against us. And if we're not too careful because we don't have Matt Vince p- probably playing tomorrow night either. Um, you're going to have to really slow him down somehow. It's just like be a shadow or don't give him a chance to shoot. I was also going to look at their, at their captain, Ryan Keenan, another, another forward. Uh, He gets the boys going and uh, we've definitely seen him in the past too. Great leadership from Ryan Keenan too. I know his team has been battling through a lot of adversity lately. They haven't had the best record. Um, 
But when they went back to, no. I think, no, they went to back-to-back championships. They beat us in 16, and they beat us in yep. 17. A lot of those players aren't, re- aren't really around that organization anymore. Like I mentioned, Mark Matthews mm-hmm. off air and how Toronto traded for him because the Bandits completely dismantled them in the yep. second round of the playoffs last year. So they had to go out and find a guy like Matthews. So there are... We don't have to worry about a guy like Mark Mark Matthews this week. That was always my circle uh, player whenever we'd go to the Rush games or we'd go to Edmonton or Saskatchewan, wherever they were playing. So we don't have to worry about a, a lefty, lethal sidearm shot like Mark Matthews. But you do have guys that are going to compensate for that. And like you said, you know, we got Mike Triolo and we got Ryan Keenan and we got, oh, we got Robert Church to look at. So it's – when I say this game is even mashed – I mean, you got your Dane Smith, and Josh Burns, and Chris Kluches, but Sass has their Ryan Keenan's, Robert Church, Zach Manns, and that's another player I really wanted to get into as well. Somebody who's very underrated in, the, in this league. I think I think well, Manns, he wears number two. Uh, yeah, he, he does. Wears number two. Zach Manns, he's very underrated. Um, I feel like he can. he's one of those rarity players that can switch hands when he gets close to the net. Um, so mm-hmm. watch out for that. If you're game planning on defense, know that he can also go to his left hand and dunk it, dunk it over the shoulder. I know there's very few of those in the NLL. It's mostly a college outdoor lacrosse mentality to switch from your right to left as far as like the roll dodge, spin dodge, face dodge, whatever, you you name it. But this guy mm-hmm. can switch hands. Uh, he's almost kind of like a Zed Williams in that regard who can go from his yeah. right to his left in zero time and dunk it over the shoulder. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that, especially coming from the trade with Matthews for Zach Manns from the Toronto Rock. And and again, this is another guy that uh, the Bandits have been having a little bit of trouble with. Um, like you said, he changes the shots known to man and he keeps you guessing no matter what you try to throw at him. And the goaltenders, whoever it is, it's either Shanahan or it's Orlman, they're going to have to really wake up and be like, all right, I got to figure him out quick. Otherwise, it's going to be a two, three goal night for him alone. Oh, yeah. If uh, we don't figure him out. So, again, Zach Manns is one of those go to bandit killers. And uh, similar to that of the bandits, we really don't know who's starting in that. We have an idea for, yeah. the, for, the, for the SAS rush. I think it's going to be Skigliano that goes, unless yeah, I think otherwise. Skigliano. But, you know, I think he's the more experienced goaltender out of the two, and he's I think he's a little bit taller as well. He's got the height advantage. Former SEAL. Um, he used to be on the SEALs, right? Yes, he has. Yeah, he locked us down pretty well last year. We only scored seven on him through four quarters and an overtime period. So, you know, he's going right. to bring his A game, and he's definitely a player to watch as well. We're done blessing the opposition here, Tony, because the Bandits need to get back on track. Who are, yep. some, of your, who are some of your key Bandits? I'm going to pass this off to you first. One of your sure. key bandit players to watch for this very important home game against the Rush. Well, obviously we all know that if he doesn't get more than one goal this game coming up, we know it's a wake up call. And I gotta go to with Dane Smith. He Dane Smith has gotta to be death, the, man. He needs to start just we need fifteen or better shots from him on Friday night and he needs to just be himself. He needs to be confident in himself. He needs to go out there and just say, Hey, Josh Byrne has been taking the wheel for all the goals for the past. God knows how many games. Now it's my turn. I got to start scoring three, four five goals, whatever it is, whatever it takes to win, get back on the winning side of things. And Dane Smith as the assistant captain of this team, he needs to start being that leader. He needs to show that, the goals are going to have to be now the more important thing instead of being the playmaker. So we need him to be a goal scorer tomorrow. It's been a role reverse from this year and last year. Josh Byrne has mm. been out all these consecutive games. It's not like Dane Smith's no. out, but he's just no. not really showing up on the score sheet. And Dane Smith carried the load all last year when Josh was out with an injury. And now That's Josh right. is picking the team up and we're not really getting, we're getting the assist. No problem. Mm-hmm. We're getting the two way forward Dane Smith. We need the selfish shoot first Dane Smith to come back right. this week and get this team back to 500. You said, Dane, I'm going to go with number yeah. two, Chris Cluche. It seems like he's been a little bit absent on the score shoot as well. And once mm-hmm. you give him open space, give him space to shoot. Right. We glorify his sidearm shot all the time on this show. You give him open space. He's going to pick a corner every time. And I yeah. call him, he's like, he's like a right-handed Mark Matthews with that sidearm. He's incredible with that sidearm so when you give him open space and he's been scoring very uncharacteristic goals this year i remember the rochester road game he's like digging Mm -hmm. down and digging for rebounds in front of the net and shoveling in like the garbage goals i'm like 
that's like a, a power forward type of move. So we've been kind of seeing like the grinder version of Chris Cloutier, which I really love, but we, we need mm-hmm. number two. We need the deuce back on the score sheet. Yeah, I think Chris Cloutier is one of those go-to guys, especially how I believe when he had the uh, open – opportunity when he stole the ball and he was right there in front of the net and he still couldn't uh finish uh, that was the vancouver game actually yeah, he got robbed. when he did steal yep and he got robbed so again he needs to find them spots where the goalies are not going to be able to protect the you know the net so he needs to really dig deep and we need to see that powerful sidearm shot like you said and have number two get back on the scoring sheet again because it can't be just relied on uh the two players that we well known is josh Byrne and dane smith but like i said dane smith does need to start waking up with the goal department and i think chris kluche also has to do that too 100 percent. what about the face-off guy he well has the spotlight on him look at what the fan base is saying including us what a lot mm-hmm. of, i want to say like a good 70 75 percent of the fan base that's been yep. kicking the seat in front of them saying oh my god we can't win face-offs to save our life right look at this new guy coming in i think he's got like the big other than the goalie and we'll get into the goaltending yeah, I think he's got the biggest spotlight on him going into this game. We got a new face, a new mm-hmm. Fogo guy, a two-year yep. contract. Connor Farrell is one of the biggest players to watch in this game on both sides. Yep, especially with the fact that now it's going to be, well, either I win 40 to 50% and get these guys back on track with the way how Max Adler did. Or you fucking uh, dominate. Or, or you or, absolutely fucking dominate. That's true, too. But he's also taller and he might be a little bit more tougher than we had with Max. And I'm not saying any disregard for Max Adler's uh, improving from year to year and going from losing a championship to winning a championship. Um, Connor Farrell is going to have to show the Buffalo Bandits offense or the transition. Hey, you can have faith in me. I'll win the faceoffs of whatever I can. It's just going to be a little bit more grittier. And I think I like the move because especially the fact of his size is that he's six foot two and he's got a little more, you know, he's got like 250 pounds. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Oh, but he's again, a big dude. Yeah, he's a big dude. And you know what? That's something we need. We need another guy who could push you back. And so Connor Farrell is going to, like you said, is going to have the spotlight on him. Maybe a little bit pressure. Maybe not. Maybe he would like that. So again, that's good news that he's coming to a team who's well-known and could possibly gel him in the right direction. And he looks like Thor, and we're, we're playing on Marvel <laughs> Night. His, his debut is happening on Marvel Night. So, I mean, that and Thor used to be on Guardians of the Galaxy in the last couple of uh, movies, so that's All a good the call. pieces are falling in the right place. If you want to go defensively, man, mm. we're so banged up defensively. But if you wanted to pick yes, someone on D and someone who – has yet to really strut his stuff to his full potential this year, and he's coming back. I'm going to go with 83, Frankie Brown. Look for a physical yeah. presence out of him. He loves to get the ball in a transition, get it up the floor real quick. Frank Brown, yeah. this is going to be his breakout game this year. Watch out for 83. Yeah, Frankie Brown has been like the well-known guy. Uh, yeah, I know, no injuries have been really not his favor because it's been keeping him away from the sport. But again, now that he's gotten healthier again and he's getting the opportunities to play, especially with Spanger out, we could, our bat Bomberry and uh Sweeting and yeah. and who and who else? Oh boy. I, I mean I I just said Bryce Sweeting, but I mean we're looking at Robinson. Yeah. And, and Robinson, that's the other name. Spanger. Um that again, that's gonna be you gotta pick the pieces up, guys. You have to fill in the shoes that you need to, and Frank Brown's one of them. But another guy that since we're mentioning defense is Zach Belter. Belter has been um, yeah, he's been tough and he's showing he's tough, but he needs to be smart about being yeah. tough yep. because you got to pick your spots at the right moment. You can't just go and be tough at somebody and then try to knock their head off and then take a dumb penalty because it's just going to put the guys back in the box. And then, you know what, that's where teams beat us is on the power play. And we yep. cannot allow that to happen from here on to the end of the season. So again, Toughness will be presence, but you've got to be smarter than that and try to stay out of the box as possible. That's right. And all eyes are going to be on the goaltending too, Tony. Whether it's yeah. Oldman or it's uh, Devlin Shanahan, I, that is one of your players to watch right there. We need a solid performance in the net. I know Matt Vince is out, and he's most likely going to be out this week too. I know they said two to four weeks, and he's missed two weeks already. I'm going to go into this game expecting that he doesn't play. And Mm -hmm. I think that's how the fan base should go into this game as well. Injury report, you know, NLL doesn't really tell us much most of the time. 
But it's um, kind of sad that they don't update that stuff. Yeah, really. like I, I would like the, but it is a broken finger. So for all we yeah. know, we could be in the net tomorrow night, and I, this whole segment could be a bunch of garbage. But I, I awesome. honestly think I was going to ask you, Tony, but I think Steve Orleman earned the start this week. Yeah, after coming in after a, a really bad debut against Vancouver for Shanahan, I mean, Orleman almost looked like he was going to be the same thing as Shanahan, but then he kind of like opened their eyes by really locking it down, like towards the end of the game, but this is another thing like that is also hurting us. It's not just defense. It's also the goaltending. So it's the, it's the must who's going to step up uh, next, or we, you know what now, since we have actually a third goaltender option, Evan might even come up and be that next guy to step up. We do not know this until game time, basically. And that's the part that sucks is that we don't get like the, the uh, updates like hockey does or football does lacrosse is last second. And it's basically game day decisions, basically, right. for who they decide who they want to put in net or who's going to be actually the starting roster. So, again, keep your eyes and ears open, guys. But we may see a debut game by the big boy himself of Evan Kostopoulos. That could, be a, that could be a possibility, too. But I don't know. But that could be, like I said, this could be the season to do it, especially with Vince being out. He's might as well give future. people chances, and we might see a good wake-up call by some players that expect the unexpected. That's right. But I'm, Steve Orleman, though, like 30 saves on 36 shots mm. coming in right. at a dire time. I mean, we were down at that point, and he had to come in and pick up some rough pieces. It was rough in the beginning for him, but in the second sure. half, in the third and the fourth quarter, that dude was locking he it was down. Lockdown. He was making some big saves there in the second half. So with him – one of our keys to the game, if we want to yep. jump right into that, I'm going to sure. say fast freaking starts. That needs yep. to be, we could say the obvious, stay out of the penalty box, but we've said that four consecutive weeks and we haven't seen any improvement in that regard. We can beat that horse to death like we've beaten sure. the Dane Smith goal scoring horse to death. But mm -hmm. I want to say fast starts. They got off to a mm, semi fast start against Albany. Going mm -hmm. jumping out to a two nothing lead, but a, with a team of that firepower, you knew that a two goal lead was not going to do any damage to them whatsoever. No, nope. when it, if if it's two nothing, you get to them early, you pile it on in that first quarter, make them regret every decision that they made in that game that early on, and make them play catch up the rest of the way, like you did with the San Diego Seals, like you did with the Colorado Mammoth at home. You guys know mm -hmm. you can win at home. Start off fast sure. and make them play catch up the rest of the way. Yeah, but you also got to – I like the one comment that you also mentioned too is that you have to play all 60 minutes. All I don't 60, care. That's key too. You key can't two. just play a half. You can't play just play a quarter. You play the whole game through. You don't give up. You keep on pressing, and you just give your opponents no chance to come back at you because the moment you open that window, they're going to come in and they're going to steal all your stuff. Basically, you just have to play your game and nonstop 60 minutes of lacrosse. That's basically the way it should be is that you – you start to finish. Done deal. Said enough. According to the manual of the New York State uh, Driving Motor Vehicle or the Bureau of Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV, mm -hmm. they say that when you're on the highway and you're coasting, do you know what that's a form of? No. Breaking. Coasting <laughs> is breaking. When you coast mm -hmm. to the finish line, you are breaking. When you break in a race, what happens? The other cars around you pass you. It's like that scene from freaking Talladega Nights where he's going around with a with a broken arm and he's driving like 26 miles per hour and the other cars are <laughs> flying past him. When you're in the third quarter and you have a two-goal lead and you take your foot off the gas, what happens, Tony? They pass you. They pass you. You have to play a full 60, and that was key number two. That was what I was going to say exactly. You read my mind there. Key three, yep. face-offs. We're back to that face-offs. Can we get yeah. 40 to 45%? I like to see 50. I like to go half. That's all I'm asking. For the yeah, first 40, game, I like to see half. We'll say that 45 to 50% face-offs. When sure. that happens, if you can get 45 to 50, mm -hmm. and which is going to go into my next key, the fourth and final key, uh, mm -hmm. the offense executes. You're going to give them more opportunities to execute yeah. on offense. Chances are you're probably going to win that game. Yeah, I would like to see them uh, set the tone and actually uh, 
get the possessions that they need. And another key thing, too, and this is probably going to be every game from here to the end, got to win those small battles, which is get the loose balls and control the clock. That's going to be another thing, too. When you have a lead and you have strong forecheck and you can mm-hmm. control the clock the best way, there's no team that's going to stop you. None. I always go back to game three because that is what this team – yeah, needs to do again. You're still missing a couple guys, but this team still has the full potential. You look at this at the Bandits roster right now; they mm-hmm. can absolutely do that again. They're just being yep. limited by dumb decisions, taking shots from the outside, All um, right? Injuries here and there, but injuries weren't an excuse last year. I'll tell you that, and they won the championship. You essentially brought back the same roster, so I know that this team could do it again. And what they did in that game three was control the clock. They're out playing them physically and they weren't mm-hmm. taking penalties. Yeah. They got to just be smart about every decision you make out there. And I know it's fast paced and it's going to be a second to decide, but you have to like you use your teammates, move it around. It's it should be a, just a basic one pass, take the shot after then get the rebound, do it all over again. Use that 30 seconds, you know, get the fresh clocks and do it again. One pass, Take the shot. If it doesn't go, get the loose ball. Do it again. Make that defense of their stay on the field as much as possible, like most of our opponents have done to us this year and has really tired us out. That's probably why we take silly penalties that, you know, we need to get some sort of stoppage on the play so just so we can get a breath of fresh air. But it's, again, you're just going to make matters worse if you do end up in the box. So, guys, simple plays make big rewards if you think about it that way. So, Get the goals when you need to shoot smartly aim for don't aim for just corners aim for their aim for goaltending's feet because um, either goaltender in net for the rush. If you're if you treat it like a Nick Rose or you treat it like a Jameson or not Jameson, uh, you treat it like a ward. Yeah, you keep them low. You're going to score goals big time. So again, and then when he and then when they commit, you obviously go up top to the shoulder. But other there than that, go. keep it to the feet. That's all I can say. And know who you're facing, too. Frank Skigliano, the last time you played him, held you to seven goals in over yep. 65 minutes of play. That was last year when we beat the Seals 7-6 in overtime. We need a different right. result. You, if you score seven goals at home, you're not winning. You need to score more than seven goals. So, Like I said. I, I think the Bandits do have a shot at, at scoring over seven goals, which can go right into our score predictions here. Sure. I'd say that it's going to be close because – you know, that's what every game lately has been. It's going to be. I'm going to say it's been, it's going to be close, and I say the Bandits win 11 to 9 in the Heat. Okay. Matchup. Well, unfortunately, due to circumstances with the, the way how the, our defense is banged up in the goaltending, too, it's going to be double digits for both sides for sure. Um, I did say that if the Bandits would hit 14 last week against Vancouver, that's a win. Obviously, it would have been it, it would have been, been fourteen thirteen. It would have been fourteen thirteen. So, um, I'm gonna still stay at that. I think Bandits should win, but they got to prove it to themselves. They don't have to prove it to us. They have to prove it to themselves. Yep. Bandits win fifteen thirteen. Fifteen thirteen, like it. Two close games, two two goal games, which I really like yeah. to see. Uh, it's gonna be back and forth. I don't. If I'm being real. You can see a, a Bandits lead after one, maybe a Rush halftime lead, Bandits lead after three, and then maybe they have the fight to the end at the end of the fourth quarter. It's going to be one of those games. It's going to be physical. You know, we can guarantee yeah. you that, but it's going to be a great show like every single game is, every single matchup is at the KeyBank Center. But it's going to be close. The Bandits have to have this one. If they lose, they gotta take it. we'll come on here and have a different narrative about hmm. – we're, we we might be starting to begin to talk some off season stuff if they lose against the rush because they five and seven and six and six are two different atmospheres from each other. But take it game by game, six and six. Mm-hmm. You, you have to get to five hundred first and foremost, and then go into Toronto with a chip on your shoulder or go up against Toronto because you're at home. Yeah, basically use that advantage, guys. Especially being at home, you got Bandaland, you got Bandaland behind you, you got us supporting you. So there really is no way of you should be losing at home. So, but again, you have to prove it to yourselves. Don't prove it to us. Right, the sinking ship. Let's rush the rush out of town. Send yep. them up the send them up the turnpike, going up against the riptide with their tails between their legs. 
and let's win this game and go six and six, go back to 500. Give us something to cheer about and yep. give us a crown. We have the crown in our hands. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're fumbling it. We can't really defend it too well. Just take it game by game. But so I got 11 do. nine, you got 15, 13, Tony. Yep. It's the only time to hit him with the sponsor now. Sure, Ken. Guys, we'd like to thank those for uh, our main sponsor is Mitchell's Tavern, located at 734 Sheridan Drive up in Tonawanda, New York. For the best service and the best food around town, go check it out. Mention us at Bandoland Boulevard, Tony Lamonic, a.k.a. Boxhead 98 TL, alongside with Trevor the Power Hauer. Um, those who are watching us on YouTube, we'd like to see you guys like and subscribe our videos. Um, hit that notification bell for every time you hear about Buffalo Bandits Lacrosse and that every time we pop up. And also for those who are listening to every single device known to man and on Spotify.fm and Anchor, give us that five-star rating that we love to talk about Buffalo Bandits Lacrosse for you and for all those who love the sport. That's right. Couldn't have said it any better. I got 11-9, week 15. You got 15-13. We both got Bandits winning. Surprise, surprise. They have yep. to win. They have to win this game. If they really yes, they want do. a legitimate shot going down the road here, down the stretch, it starts maintaining tomorrow. a playoff spot. I would say this is equivalent to a postseason game. Win this one. Mm-hmm. Use that mentality. This is a postseason game. This is a playoff mentality. And it will be when you get 17,000-plus wearing their orange and black gear tomorrow night at the key bank center it's going to be a packed house it's going to be a fun game to watch yes it will and guys like i said before if you guys ever want to join in on our show and you want to talk about bandits lacrosse or even say your input about a certain player or about the team or anything please message both myself or trevor over there and we will be happy to put you on the show that's right and uh, we've we've had a couple guests before and it's been it's been a blast so yes we have Yep. And we should have a couple more new players coming up aboard. But again, we're going to wait and see what they have on their schedule. But uh, keep in keep in touch, guys, because believe me, if you guys want to say any questions, we'll write them down and we'll ask and just, uh, yeah, we'll do what we can do here. That's right. My last message I have for the bandits is know your role. I sound like Dwayne The Rock Johnson a little bit here. Look at that. (laughs) Know your role. You guys are the big bullies on the block. You have a crown Mm -hmm. to prove that. You got five championship banners hanging down from the rafters, but the most important one right now is the one from 2023 that you're going into this season. You have to know that every team is gunning for you. So know your role. Shut those teams down. They're all trying to get a piece of the crown. You just got to keep shoving them back down. That's it, guys. And all I can say is for you. And shut their damn mouth, right? That's right. And for me, I'll take the famous words from Tohoka Natakoka himself. Just don't suck. Just don't suck. Just we've don't suck. Seeing, we've been seeing some suckiness the past three weeks. <laughs> let's not suck in week 15 when we play the rush. No. no. Let's go out there and have fun and just be ourselves. That's right. The games against the rush in the past, they've all been close. Go back to yes, the 2016 championship. Go back to their Edmonton days. They've always played us well. We've always played them well. Every game has been back and forth. Very underrated yeah. matchup in the NLL and the NLL history books between the Bandits and the Rush. So they've always been very, very close. The one I can remember off the top of my head is from the Edmonton days. I think mm-hmm. we beat them, was it maybe 2009, 2010? And we beat them 17, 16. And I think it was Stainhouse that got the OT goal in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Nice. They've been, going, they've been going down to the wire since then. And we're talking 14, 15 years ago. So yep. it's going to be another one of those games. They might play sure in a different city, but they're still the same team at heart. So it's going to be yeah. close, but just hang in there, guys. And if the Bandits win, the, the narrative change. The narrative will change. We're back to 500. We're going we're gonna to do some damage. Well, let's get them, guys. This is all you now. This is out of our hands. We'll have your back and support you and cheer for you, but you got to go out there and make the wins happen. So all I can say is it's just have fun. Use it, you know, play as one and uh, start right now. This is where right. we, we have to make a move. And I got, I, I trust them. The offense, defense, yep. goaltending, Johnny, they're all pissed off, especially mm-hmm. last week. When you lose to yep. a two and eight team, that sour taste is going to be lingering in your mouth from the rest of the season, especially where you are. You're in seventh place in the standings. That's yep. got to be lingering around. It is. And it's got to be because it's the way, you know, Three of the straight losses would be like, hey, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to hate being 
losing. Like, I hate to lose. Yep. But so, wake up. Wake up. That's all we bad got. Dream. Wake up. Bad wake dream. up. It's, this is a bad dream, and you can wake up from it with a big win. So, with that said, win, lose, or tie, which isn't even possible, but we always leave mm-hmm. it with these three words at the end of our Banditland Boulevard show. What are those three words, Tony? Let's, Let's go, go bandits. bandits. Let's go. Just don't suck. Just don't suck, boys. Go get Let's that go. dub. Go get it.